Well, uh, so I am David Ortnow. I am a principal program manager with .NET. Um, I joined Microsoft about five years ago. Uh, com this coming December will be my five years. Uh, my official is actually not until April, but I count December because that's when I started doing it. Um, and uh, I started working on Xamarin. Xamarin Forms was kind of the uh, the first product that I uh, was the program manager for. Uh, still do that. Um, but we've got a great team of program managers, Maddie Legere, Dimitri Leallen, um, Olia Gavrish, Jake Kirsch, um, Zaren, Chris Hardy. Um, and then, of course, there's always the infamous James, not infamous, the amazing James Montemagno. Uh, so we've got a great team that cares deeply about these products. Um, and this is a great day, Xamarin Expert Day. We get to see everybody who's passionate about the platform. Hopefully, there's some of you here that are uh, maybe new to this and you're, you're wanting to learn what's this all about. Uh, when I did a, a session Monday for a local user group, um, many people did not have a clue what Maui was. So uh, if that's you. Uh, you're going to get that introduction here, but uh, I know there's been a lot of sessions leading up to this that uh, have already covered a lot of good information. So if you haven't already, take a screenshot of my contact information. You can reach me there. Uh, I'm happy to. Uh, I, I can't promise I'll reply quickly um, to the emails, but um, I do my best. And it's always good to hear from you what you're, what you're using, what you're doing, uh, what we can help you with. All right. So... Let's get in the right place so I can go to the next slide. So that's who I am. Uh, I've been, you know, I'm much older than perhaps I look, although I probably look pretty old right now with the lack of sleep. That's okay. Um, I actually have an English degree. I'm not a computer science guy. Uh, I taught myself programming back in uh, high school and college and then um, had my own business for many years, worked in enterprise, worked in healthcare, did a lot of creative agency uh, related work, startups and things like that before I joined Microsoft. So what is .NET MAUI? Uh, well, first of all, it's an acronym, uh, Multi-Platform App UI. And so in order for it to be the most productive way, we shortened it to MAUI because nobody wants to say Multi-Platform App UI when you can say MAUI, right? Um, so this is how we uh, enable you using .NET to develop native applications that perform great on Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, those are the four core platforms that we support in .NET MAUI. And <laughs> yeah, I'm not 25. <laughs> Let's go with 47, okay? Um, which is a great age. It's a, it's a great ripe old age. Uh, and, and we're doing this with, what you know, emphasis on code sharing. Um, so there's also some key things that we're doing in .NET MAUI. Uh, you know, I've heard, I've seen the phrase several times, oh, Microsoft's releasing yet another UI framework uh, to the mix. When in reality, and I think most of you Xamarin uh, experts will know this, uh, that it is the extension of Xamarin Forms, which is a almost eight-year-old product at this point, right? Um, so it's been through eight versions of iOS and Android. And you haven't, if you've started at the very beginning, you haven't needed to rewrite your application. You might have modernized it a couple of times. Um, we went from, uh, what was it, um, beveled edges on buttons to flat to now whatever it is that we have from a design standpoint. And Xamarin Forms continues to be very useful there. So Maui is going to take that to the next level. All right, so uh, I'm gonna give a little preamble, uh, some prerequisites uh, kind of, my goal here is that as you approach starting your next project or your next experiment or your next spike and you choose .NET Maui, um, I'm going to give you some of the things that you want to be thinking about, um, probably some of the things you are thinking about. And uh, then we're going to go look at some code. And uh, we will hopefully cover most of those things that I have listed there. Uh, as I said, I have many versions of Visual Studio installed, and uh, everything is in a slightly different state. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go through the adventure together of seeing what the live demo gods and fairies have in store for us. Uh, and then I'll do a quick recap and then I'll point you to some resources. And certainly I will be here for some questions either in the chat or if we have time, I don't wanna run into the next presenter. Um, so what we're not going to cover is we're not going to cover how this compares directly one-to-one -one with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Uh, we're not going to cover the upgrade path 
although we do have a fantastic upgrade path for Xamarin applications, Android and iOS. Um, and then we have the .NET Migration Assistant or Upgrade Assistant uh, that Sweeky and Maddie are working on for Xamarin Forms apps and for Xamarin iOS and Android and macOS apps. So um, I'm not going to be covering that today. I am going to be making somewhat liberal use of PowerPoint's uh, image library, where this fellow came from. I think some of us working from home probably can uh, commiserate with what he might be feeling in this picture. I don't know. It just spoke to me when I saw it. So there you go. All right. So on to the preamble. Um, so .NET 6 and Visual Studio 2022 are kind of a package deal. Of course, you can install .NET 6 from the command line, and you can also install MAUI as an optional workload. Um, it's, it's called an optional workload. It is a, it is a part of .NET now. Um, so it ships with it. Uh, when you install .NET, it knows what the different uh, workloads are that you can acquire, uh, depending on what it is you want to build. And you can do all of that from the command line, but really your best experience is going to install uh, to be to install from Visual Studio. As of uh, Visual Studio 2022 Preview 4, which we shipped last month, we, we are in the installer, the Willow installer, and uh, it's that checkbox right there. You want to make sure that you check that. Um, and then there are also a few additional things you need to check in that version. Um, and we're working towards getting to the place where all you need to do is check the MAUI box. And of course, uh, when we're ready uh, to, to launch for GA, MAUI will be the main box in the middle of the screen. Um, and Xamarin will become a sub check underneath it. I'm watching the chat for questions, so feel free to throw some stuff in there. I can't promise that I will absolutely catch it, but if Gerald's paying attention and not playing patty cake with Steven, um, then maybe he can break in and tell me what the questions are. No, you're not? No, no, no I'm not. I'm right here. No, no. There is, I don't know if you want to take it. There is a question. It's actually directed at me, but uh, there is one. Let me see if I can bring it up. Um, I think you did. You were not going to mention the conversion, but what would you, would you what would you advise to migrate an existing and still active development UWPF .NET native compile to Maui? If it was up to me, I would I would change everything to Maui. But um, so I think you know, um, it, like I said, it's, it's it's directed to me. So let me take a little bit of time here. Um, if you're still developing it now, I mean, Maui is still preview for some time, as we've announced. Um, so if it's still in active development, I would stick with UWP right now. Um, and, you know, kind of following on the pattern what Sam mentioned uh, in his session, um, it, it, is there any uh, desire to go cross-platform? Is there any desire to support other platforms? If yes, definitely look into Maui. If UWP is fine, stick with UWP. Exactly. Yep. And, uh, you know, lots of investment on the Windows platform with the Windows App SDK, formerly known as Project Reunion. Um, so you, you have a, a, a nice home there if that is the application in the, in the framework that suits your needs. Um, but yeah, like, like Gerald said, if you do want to go cross-platform, then Maui is a good option for you. Uh, I see the question from Olympus Tech, Maui will take over Xamarin. It is, is it effectively the next version? Yep. So uh, we've been shipping iOS 15 all along. Uh, we have been uh, shipping Android 12 all along in our .NET 6 previews. And so those are starting to come now to the uh, Visual Studio 2019 Xamarin channel of things. Um, and once we go GA with MAUI, which does include Android and iOS underneath the hood, then uh, at that point, the support policy lifecycle for Xamarin will continue on, which is a, a two-year support according to the modern lifecycle policy. And everybody should be at that point upgrading to .NET 6. All right, cool. So uh, this is where MAUI is. It's in Visual Studio 2022. All .NET 6 things are in Visual Studio 2022. So uh, use the side-by-side -side install functionality. Uh, use your Windows machines. Uh, if you are uh, exclusively on the Mac, you are going to be uh, for a bit yet until they ship a, a new Visual Studio 2022 for the Mac or ship a one. Um, you're going to be using Visual Studio Code and CLI, which is a cool experience. And you probably saw that from James earlier if you were around. Uh, another thing you're going to want to consider as you approach new projects or migrating projects is what are your third-party library dependencies? 
Um, most of those who uh, do not use Xamarin Forms types and are net standard or better or newer, uh, those are gonna those are gonna probably work just fine. Um, one of the projects that I have open here, and we may look at the code, uses refit, for example. You know, there's no UI bits to that, um, and it works as is. Uh, and but those that do use uh, the the forms types need to be migrated to .NET MAUI, uh, and then released with .NET six uh, TFMs target framework monikers. So that's a there's a NuGet packaging thing that needs to happen there. Uh, the Xamarin Community Toolkit, good news, uh, that's starting to ship already. Gerald knows that very well. Uh, Brandon Minnick uh, has been all over that as well. And you can see the blogs on the Xamarin blog. So uh, you can check the status there. They've also merged this um, maintainership with the Windows Community Toolkit. So it's all one big Community Toolkit org now and uh, on GitHub. And then um, they're going to start sharing a bit more code and things. Uh, there are two flavors right now of the Community Toolkit. There is the Compat version, which uh, shims the Xamarin Forms renderers into MAUI uh, controls. And then there is the pure MAUI, which right now I think is mostly just behaviors and non-UI things. Uh, Xamarin Essentials, uh, good news. It's in MAUI, so you don't have to go looking for it. It's just right there. We want to make sure it's all at your fingertips. So evaluate what your needs are. Um, is what you are, are the things you need available? Uh, can you do without them? Uh, are, are they perhaps things that uh, MAUI actually supports now, such as uh, we've added borders and shadows? Um, those just landed like last week. So, you know, definitely plenty of polish that needs to go into them. Um, but, you know, you may not need that pancake view now. Sorry, Stephen. Um, so, uh, or could you write your own? Is this something that is now super easy for you to actually implement yourself uh, with uh, handlers um, or with just composite controls? You have lots of options there. Do you actually need that third-party dependency? Um, you can also um, encourage and or support that third-party maintainer and get those things moving. Um, some of the more popular libraries like um, RG pop-ups and um, uh, ARC, is that right? No, ACR, Alan Ritchie. <laughs> I, I got your I got your initials wrong. Um, some of those libraries that are pretty popular are are in the process of being touched and upgraded and released. Of course, Prism has been updated, so that's great. So check those out. Just make sure that uh, that you're setting yourself up for success there. And uh, I've got a round of updates here. I know that Progress, I see, is a sponsor here, so that's awesome. And Sam and company have been all over Maui since, since before day one when we were talking about it. Um, and they have been actively shipping and uh, you know upgrading all of their stuff and building new things uh, for Maui. So this is really exciting. Definitely check this out. Um, I didn't even know they had the barcode stuff. Uh, I, I just saw that yesterday when I went to the website to see what the latest news was. That's really cool. Um, and then Dev Express just yesterday launched their blog uh, with a new release of their controls. And so they've got a whole bunch of controls. I, I wasn't even fully aware of all the controls they had. I knew they had the charting stuff, um, which is beautiful. And they also have sample apps. And I know that uh, Progress has sample apps. I think all the vendors now are shipping sample apps. So that's a good um, resource for you as well to go learn uh, you know, how, how to build apps with Maui. What does the code look like? And uh, poke around at it while you also get to explore some awesome, very beautiful third-party controls. Our native, uh, Sharaf asks, are native library bindings usable with MAUI or is there a new mechanism? Uh, they are usable. The library binding project as a unique type is gone now. So it is now, uh, everything's an SDK style project. But yes, uh, all of that stuff should continue to work as it is. Um, there are a couple of project system things that I think we still need to work through, and there, and there have been some bugs filed on. But uh, when we go GA, yeah, all that stuff will work and be supported. Uh, question, Maui will have some C-sharp hot reload. Yep, absolutely. If we want custom views, the handler can reload. Uh, so C-sharp hot reload and uh, the way it does the method body replacement, um, you may be able to do that. I think we need to... Or, you would need to test that. Maybe actually, well, uh, I don't think the team has been uh, doing this, but 
uh, check it out. So the way it works right now is that not everything will absolutely get reloaded. One of the key factors is can that code be re-triggered? Um, so I know that when I have tested overriding and extending handlers, like when I implemented uh, the debug rainbows uh, way back when, I don't remember what presentation that was, um, but I was able to hot reload that. Um, once the method was already there and I was inside of it, as long as I could re-trigger that. And by re-trigger, I mean make sure that your application executes that code path again. Um, I do believe there is a uh, undocumented method also where you can tell uh, C Sharp Hot Reload, hey, anytime I make a change, re-execute these methods or this method. Um, so I, I, need to, I need to learn from uh, other people smarter than me what that is but I've been told it works. All right, so uh, some, some great controls here. Uh, and that uh, screenshot on the right is actually a template studio uh, that they are working on at DevExpress. So very cool stuff. Um, and then SyncFusion also yesterday launched a blog. So going head to head um, and uh, you know just a beautiful set of uh, controls, tab view there. Uh, and I think one of the interesting things here, and I know that uh, other vendors are doing this also, but I noticed in the FAQs when asked, uh, are these controls migrated from Xamarin Forms, uh, they indicated they're using the .NET Maui graphics library, which I'm very excited to hear. Um, I know that Javier uh, did a session earlier today about the graphics work that he's been doing, and uh, really excited to uh, get that shipping on NuGet so that we can get your feedback and, and learn if these things are going to be uh, as big a win as we think that they are. Is it completely compatible with Windows 11? Yes, I'm running Windows 11. Yep. All right. So that all makes you super happy seeing those third-party controls. I know it makes me happy. Uh, this was the appropriate emotion image for that. Woohoo! All right, so, oh, oh no, .NET Maui is preview. So this is, you know, take this into consideration when you're starting your next, uh, you know, project or spike. Uh, the quality is not going to be GA for a bit yet. Um, you're going to hit, uh, you're going to hit things that are missing or not behaving the way you want it to uh, early and often in some cases. Uh, we know that other folks have had good success. I heard from a customer just yesterday that they have um, built out and ported a couple of their Xamarin apps and they're pretty much, uh, they feel they're pretty close to ready to ship them. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary there, but be aware. Performance is an area where we have more work to do. Um, on iOS, performance, runtime startup uh, looks really good. Uh, Catalyst and uh, for the Mac and WinUI for Windows or Windows App SDK um, looks good. Um, however, we haven't really done any trimming work or very minimal trimming work. What that means is uh, using the .NET linker, uh, when you compile for release and you use that feature, it will strip out uh, the code that you're not using. Um, we also just landed, which will ship in our next release coming out in a few weeks, uh, the new profiled AOT startup tracing for Android. Um, and so that will get your, uh, your Maui apps down quite a bit. Uh, I think the Hello World, we're down to around 1,100 milliseconds. So almost at that one second mark, which is pretty exciting. Um, Android itself is right around three to 400 milliseconds for a startup. Um, and then we also need to do the work on, you know, the trimming will help a lot on reducing all the assemblies so that our performance and our startup gets better and better. That also feeds into app size. App size and performance go hand in hand. So uh, right now, the Android app size actually looks better than uh, than before. Uh, iOS is not the case. Uh, iOS is about 120% larger right now. So we have known work there that we're, we're going after uh, to make sure that we get those app sizes back down where they were, if not better. Uh, and the controls and layouts, you can go to the status web page on our wiki and check that out and get an update. Uh, just know that uh, you know some of the controls like collection view, for example, are still shimmed in. They are not ported to handlers completely yet. There is a PR working on that. Um, so that's just one example of something that uh, is yet to be there. All of the, all of the layouts and the features uh, are there and you can use them. Uh, except those that are not implemented at all. Um, but 
you know, just be aware of that. Go in with your eyes wide open. Um, and then features as well. I think for the most part, the features are there. Um, right to left, I know is working. I know accessibility is working. Um, app theming, uh, light and dark mode is working. So uh, lots of really cool stuff there. But, um, you know, look at it and make sure it meets your needs. So if you're good with that, um, then uh, I definitely encourage you to go in and check it out and file issues. Um, so here's a, a good indication of all the controls that are still outstanding. This is slightly out of date um, because I know that we landed some of the border stuff um, and a few of the other PRs. So a couple of these uh, have been completed. Uh, the big uh, bucket is that lower right-hand corner, all the other controls, carousel, collection, indicator, map, refresh, swipe. Um, and so I have uh, I have a, uh, what do you call it, a browser. <laughs> you can look at our roadmap and you can see where we have planned for those things to land in our shipping schedule. Um, map, for example, is pretty far out there. That's a, that's a decent effort. Uh, it's a binding effort. Um, so check that out. All right, so now I want to go look at some code. So let me flip over to, what is that called? Visual Studio. All right, so a uh, couple of things that I want to call attention to here first. So this is my, my little control gallery where that I uh, kind of pulled all the samples, all those Xamarin form samples in, and uh, started updating them and styling them. Uh, and I use this to validate where we are with things. So I'll start with perhaps, oh, is it this? It is that. But did that actually zoom? No, it did not. Did it? Hang on. I'm lagging. Do -do -do. It did not zoom, did it? Nope. All right. Escape. Uh, sorry about that. So I wanted to zoom in on the solution, but... Here we are. So uh, a couple of things to call out. Um, so, you know, we have app XAML, um, totally optional to use XAML. You can just have an app. Uh, the main thing that this is responsible for is newing up main page. Behind the scenes, it is actually generating a window and, and applying this content to that window. Um, so this is the, if you saw the very early uh, preview two, preview three of .NET 6, you saw that we actually exposed all of that stuff here. You can still get to it. Um, and uh, the thing is, is that we have not actually implemented multi-window yet. So the API is there, uh, the additional windows are not. Um, that is uh, in the works right now. So uh, App Shell, um, I definitely recommend App Shell for sure as the way to get started very easily, very quickly. You can do flyouts, as you can see here. If I can find my emulator. It's hiding behind all of these other windows. So, you know, I've got a, I've got a fly out here. I can turn that into tabs as well. Um, I can also have top tabs. I can have a mix of all of the above. Um, and I can also navigate with URI and uh, I can also push and pop and I can do modals. You can do it all. Um, and you can template them fairly easily too. So it's a nice, simple way uh, to get going. Now you also have distinct controls for fly out page for tabbed page and for navigation page. And so if you prefer to compose those things yourself, you'll have slightly less flexibility in terms of combining them. It'll be a bit more code for sure, um, but those are all still available to you. So uh, go, go with which makes sense. Um, so single, this is a single project, a one project, right? So what this means is that all the platforms are actually in this platforms folder. And then this is where uh, the main activity is for Android, for example, iOS, the app delegate. These are the entry points for those native platforms. And really all of these platforms are doing very simply, doo -doo -doo, make some room. There's so many good panels I have open here. So really, actually it's the application. Um, this is going to uh, create the MAUI app. So it's referring to, and this is the host builder pattern that is used in Blazor and ASP.NET Core. Uh, it's going to call MAUI program, create the MAUI app. And then if we go over here, uh, this is where we are going to generate the builder. We're going to pass in the app, which is the app XAML app CS. And then we can do other things. 
we can configure fonts. We can uh, do dependency injection. We can uh, initialize essentials things, things that you would normally have to go into your app delegate and then your main activity and then et cetera, et cetera, and uh, duplicate a bunch of code. You can actually do all of that right here um, and keep it in one place. So a whole lot more efficient. Um, we have a PR for source generators, which uh, would give you the ability to actually remove these and, the, and let the source generator build task go ahead and create those for you. So if you don't need to customize them, you don't even need to worry about them. Um, the other thing I wanted to point to, and maybe it's best to actually look at the CS proj. I don't know if anybody else has done this for you today, um, but a couple of things to be aware of in here. I'll just do this. Um, the target frameworks are important. These, this tells uh, Visual Studio and the .NET um, build what are the different frameworks that this project supports. So this is all multi-targeted. Um, if you do a file new, you're going to see that um, this one for Windows is commented out. That's because you need to go up here to the extensions. And I actually already should have it installed. It's this one right here, the single project MSIX packaging tools for Windows App SDK project reunion. Um, this is needed. Uh, you need to install it separately right now. We're working with uh, the Windows team and Visual Studio to actually get it baked in so that that's not a concern and you get it, you get it for free. Um, the th couple of things that I did want to highlight here. Um, some some somewhat magical things happening. Uh, we have some wild cards here. So anything that gets dropped into images is going to be looked for and treated as a Maui image, which is going to mean it's going to generate all the different DPIs and sizes that you need for other platforms. Um, you have the option to actually um, control that here yourself. So if I do a Maui image, you can set a base size. And say, okay, this thing is only supposed to be 80 by 80. Don't go guessing. Um, and of course, you need to give it a source of some kind, right? Um, but you can do things like this and uh, have more control over how it generates those images. But by default, it's going to do all this stuff for you. In my experience, uh, using SVGs as my source format or PNGs, um, it does a fantastic job. I haven't had any concerns about that myself. Um, and then fonts, anything you drop into the fonts folder, uh, and this is using a, a you know, pattern match with TTF for true type fonts, um, is going to be included. And you saw in my Maui program here um, that I actually add those and, and do some additional configuration on top of that, where I uh, give it some short aliases so that in the project, we can actually control that. Um, okay, a couple other cool things here. You've seen this, and uh, let's go ahead and bring this over. So this is the XAML Live Preview, uh, and it does a couple of cool things. First of all, I can't, I can't click on it yet. Um, there is some inspection uh, hit testing that needs to happen so that you can inspect your UI here. Um, and that will come in a future release, um, but it's not there just yet for us. Um, the, uh, any interaction I have to do on the emulator or the device itself, and in this case, it's an emulator, just sitting off to the side here. One of my favorite features of this, um, and this may be the best part of the entire demo, is first of all, I can create guides, I can control and scroll, and I can get right up in here and I can align things, right? So I've done that. Now what I wanna see is I'm gonna test out, I know that um, Rachel Kang showed on her accessibility uh, presentation just before this, the uh, font auto scaling. So by default, fonts will change size depending on what uh, the user chooses. So I'm going to come back here. I've already got my settings open for the font sizes on Android. And I'm going to bump this up a little bit. And then I'm going to flip back over to my app. And look at that. I can confirm using this beautiful little guide, simple example, that actually, yes, my font did change size. It wasn't my imagination. Um, so very cool. I think that's totally awesome. Um, and while we're here, let's click the change theme. Yay, themes work. Um, cool. 
Let's see. So uh, one more thing I wanted to point out here, or not maybe, maybe not one more, but another thing I wanted to point out is the live visual tree. So here's a tip for you. Um, if you're doing things in your app, um, so for example, what page am I on? I am on, da -da -da, I am on this page, which is the app theme page. So let's open that up. So if you're on a page, app theme page, and you make a change, right? And you're like, okay, that should have hot reloaded. And it did hot reload, so yay. But if it doesn't, um, look at your live visual tree and see if your live visual tree is actually populated with content. If it's not, that's an indicator that something went wrong. Um, and then you want to go look at your error list and you want to go look at your output. Um, which you all also have this Xamarin hot reload output. And these are two uh, good tools for you to use and will tell you why your hot reloads may not be working. So when you make an unsupported edit, for example, um, let me see if I can think of one that would be interesting. Um, so I could do this. And it's going to say, uh, you know, there's no type converter for this. I don't know what to do about that. You should fix that. Um, and actually, do I have an error in my error list? And then I also have this error in the error list. The X, XHR is a uh, Xamarin Hot Reload error message. And so since there's an error, uh, no change is going to be applied until I clear that up and now I'm good to go. Hopefully that helps somebody. Um, and so this is a very useful uh, tool in general so that you can actually pop to the source. That took me right to it, look at that, pretty awesome. Which label is this? View source, look at that. Um, so you can also get a good indication of how deeply you're nesting your views. And if it's going very deep, you may wanna look into that. Um, I am using shell, so everything gets reported via the shell. And then I know which menu is in which order and I can go find things. Um, it'll be a whole lot easier when we can just click on things up here, right? All right, so I think that covers a lot of what I wanted to show in this particular application. Um, I guess maybe there's a couple of SDK things I can highlight here. So for example, oh, look at this. So if I go to my button page, I'm about out of time, aren't I? I've been so excited talking about this stuff. Um, so a couple of things I'm doing here. First of all, I have a shadow. So. Do I really have a shadow? Yes, I do. Look at that, look at that. Pretty awesome. So I love the zoom feature, can you tell? <laughs> um, so uh, a couple of other things here. Let's see, what else am I doing that's interesting? Um, I can't click that there, but I can click it here and that's going to pop, yay. Um, it's gonna pop a uh, dialogue. So alerts are working, dialogues are working. Apparently they're now working slow because I did too many things at once. Um, so shadows, they do take brushes. Uh, we will look at adding a um, XAML extension. Uh, what do we call those things? Markup extension. So that we can do something like this, you know, shadow, brush, red, blah, 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 right? Um, but for now, uh, you need to apply it like this. Um, then we also have borders, but I think borders is on a different screen. Where did I do borders? I don't even remember now. Um, so this this code is all up on my GitHub. You can check that out. Um, I want to jump over to a different project. Dun, 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 dun. Visual Studio, not that one, that one. So this is the Hacker News sample up on Brandon Minnick's uh, GitHub. And I wanted to highlight that he has refit, he has poly in here, and then he's also using uh, Xamarin Community Toolkit Maui Markup. So what is this? Well, notice that he has, as he loves to point out, no XAML. There's no XAML anywhere in his project. Yeah, sure. Um, so no XAML. 
and uh, all C sharp. And so this is, uh, you know, with the with the introduction of C sharp and .NET Hot Reload, uh, I think that this could become a more interesting way, perhaps more popular than it is now, to do your development uh, directly in C sharp. So uh, XAML is certainly beloved. And it is where we have a lot of productivity investment in Visual Studio. So it is uh, on what I would call a happy path for you as a developer. Um, but more and more uh, capabilities here are available to you in C Sharp. So what does this look like? Um, I think that this is very similar to what Sam showed right before me, although I think his stuff was Comet. So in the constructor for this news page, um, and actually, well, I'm not going to open it because it kind of deadlocks on the uh, call to Hacker News right now. Um, but this is how you generate UI. And then what um, what the markup extensions give you are these nice helpers here for binding, for invoking. Um, you know, you can bind what the uh, refresh properties are to your view model. Um, so very convenient stuff. Another cool thing that I've seen uh, happening here, if we go over to startup, um, this is using the uh, DI, uh, the baked in uh, inversion of control containers uh, with the hosting model so that he can supply the service for the iHacker News, um, his view model and his page, and then use the constructor injection. So if we come here to the view model, you can see that this is being, uh, well, maybe you don't see it. That's kind of how DI works, right? Uh, this is actually provided by uh, the hosting model. So it's being injected. So very cool stuff there. Um, all right. So I think I have like five minutes left. Is that right, Gerald? Five minutes left. Yep, that seems about right. All right, let's flip back. Thank you. Thank you, headless person speaking to me. Or maybe you weren't headless. I'm just looking at the YouTube. <laughs> Technically, I don't think you're allowed to speak to me if you're not visible. All right, hang on. Nope. So I'm, I'm jumping on the screen and off the screen. <laughs> so here I am, and now I'm gone. So hopefully, uh, seeing all of those things from your comfortable seat makes you feel like this. You're cuddled up with your kitty cat, and you're like, oh, this is going to be so nice when it ships, and I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Best practices on solution structure, Noel. Uh, the way I do it obviously is the best. It really depends. Uh, <laughs> there's no, there's no tried and true. Um, you know, there's, it's really about, uh, can, can people navigate the structure of your solution? Uh, should you have team members uh, or people coming in after you? Is that Lachlan? I don't know. Could be. Have you noticed that all the dudes that I have in here have gray hair? Um, trying to represent. So, yeah, there's really no no one way to do a uh, solution structure. Um, whatever makes sense for you and or the people that you're working with. Um, a couple of things that I'll call attention to real quick as I part. Uh, you can easily customize controls on the platform level doing things like this. You can use if def patterns or you can use file name schemes uh, to do the multi-targeting. You access the handler through the microsoft.maui.controls.handlers, I think is where that is. And then you look for the dictionary position of the control or the property that you want to override. And then we are adding new extension methods. So you can see that this one is called modify mapping. So these extension methods will allow you to more easily tap into these without having to re-implement them. And then you can uh, do things before or after, et cetera. So uh, if you want to check these out, I highly recommend looking at the pull requests on the Maui repo and then uh, navigate to the files on the pull request and look for the tests because um, there should be a gallery with examples and then tests that exercise it. And that's a really great way to learn how to use it until, of course, we document these things. Um, so to recap, uh, I showed you the one project with the multiple platforms. Uh, I don't. I didn't really call attention to it, but we have optimized layouts, vertical stack layout, horizontal stack layout. Um, layouts in general have gotten an overhaul so that they are optimized and faster and certainly much easier to maintain. Um, and then borders and shadows. 
easily styling controls. You can compose controls. Don't feel like you have to go to the native platform just to be able to do things. Take an icon, take a button, put them together. Um, take an entry control and an and a, and a icon and put them together. Do whatever you need to do. You can wrap things however you want to in Xamarin Forms. You can use SAML and or C Sharp. And then, of course, you get all the really cool stuff with Visual Studio 2022. Where can you go? What can you do with these things? Um, I highly recommend going to our docs. We have some uh, docs there now for getting started. We are in the process of moving over the Xamarin docs, uh, those that apply. Some of them will just stay where they are. Um, and you can look at the Xamarin Forms docs and the majority of the content there will apply as well. So um, you know, consider this the next version of Xamarin Forms in that way and just kind of flip some names in your head, right? Uh, we do have some presentations. If you're doing user group presenting or you're wanting to do user group presenting and you're like, where can I find current up-to-date slides and content? Uh, go to that GitHub right there for .NET MAUI. And I have two presentations there right now. One is on migration. One is just an, a high-level introduction. Um, and if you want more open issues, let me know what you want to see. Uh, there is a wiki where you can find status on all the controls and layouts in terms of what's implemented, what's not. And then there's also the roadmap there and a whole host of other documented pages of how you can get started using the main branch of MAUI uh, without installing it from other places. Anyway, uh, it's a bit convoluted, but if you're wanting to live on the bleeding edge, check that out. And then, of course, there's the Weather 21 app, which I showed screenshots of, but we didn't actually demo here. Um, and there are other apps, the, the Hacker News app I showed, the Control Gallery app that I have, the Control Gallery that's in the Maui repo. All of the, the third-party vendors have uh, several, in many cases, uh, sample apps. Check all of those out. Don't forget .NET Conf. Look at that. I'm on time-ish. Uh, set your calendars if you haven't already. Be there. We will have awesome Maui demos, Maui Blazor demos, Blazor Blazor demos. Uh, we will have a very solid, beautiful release of .NET Maui preview. Um, from a, a timeline standpoint, here's what you can expect from us. We'll be shipping previews every month through uh, Q2 of 2022, at which point we will GA.NET Maui. Um, so thanks for joining. I will hang around in the chat for questions, but you have another presenter coming in after me, right? We do. It was a close call because he had some technical issues, but I see him here. Um, so hopefully he is actually here. Well, you can use um, me to stretch it out if you have to. Yeah, so I think there's a couple of questions maybe that we can go over while we buy him a little bit more time. Um, do, 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 what do we have here? Well, I Is see this. Uh, I'll, I'll grab a couple here. Will, will bindings be compiled by default? Uh, so bindings are not compiled by default. XAML is compiled by default now. That is a change. Um, bindings, in order to uh, trigger a compilation or, yeah, a compiled binding, you need to supply the data type. So as soon as you do that, it knows how to bind it or compile it, and it will do that. Um, where can I find fi find documentation to know how Maui architecture works internally? Um, there is a development guide up on GitHub, and James Montemagno has been working on a contributor guide that does a source walkthrough. So look for those. Pester James. Uh, wasn't he wasn't he doing something with code tours? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it was a tour or something. I don't know. Is yeah, you have this plugin code tours. Yeah, that's that's cool. It's know. it's a plugin code tours. It's a plugin for VS Code, I think. Um, and so we basically add a dot code tours folder, which is hidden, and then whenever you open it in VS Code, it will automatically uh, prompt you with like, "Hey, we have this code tour available. Do you want to take it?" And then it will take you through various stages in the source code uh, with some comments by James or whoever. Uh, to explain a little bit what you're looking at. It's a pretty cool solution, actually. That is so, very cool. Yeah. I had no idea that's what he was doing. I thought he was just writing a doc or something nope. and, and doing nope. a nope. YouTube video. And I was like, oh. See, I, I'm glad I don't have to pay that much attention to all of those things because I've got other things <laughs> to watch out for. <laughs> um, question from Malky Willur. Uh, should Microsoft's uh, Windows App SDK 1.0 preview update in the projects with Preview 8? 
Um, so I believe preview eight, and I could be wrong because I have so many different versions here. Um, we are now on 1.0 experimental. Um, so always check our templates on GitHub and or uh, the file new as for what version to be using. Um, but yeah, we're trying to or needing to ride the experimental train with the Windows app SDK releases because uh, there are still pieces coming from them that we need that are only available in experimental. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out and watching. Hopefully this was useful.